How fast your bike goes is, let's face it, almost entirely dependent on how fit, strong and light you are. But those three things are not the only three things that matter, not by a long shot. I mean, aerodynamics, clearly incredibly important. But how can we actually make our bikes go faster? Well, here are five things for a start. I know, I know, I know, I always say this. Clean your bike, it'll last longer. Clean your bike, it'll feel nicer. Clean your bike, it'll look nicer. But seriously, clean your bike and it will go faster. So, gunk on your chain, on your chain rings, your cassette and your jockey wheels add significant amounts of friction to the drivetrain. And that means that some of your precious watts will no longer be powering the back wheel and moving you forward. They'll be doing other things like making a horrific noise. So the key is to clean your drivetrain scrupulously. And that means using a really good quality degreaser and really getting in there, particularly between the plates of the chain, not just making it look shiny on the outside. Although I'm sure we're all guilty of that. And so although I am late to the party in this one, I will admit, but using a chain clean device is seriously time saving and also very effective, as is that all important degreaser. While we're in the middle of reducing drivetrain friction, one of the other forces that's holding us back is rolling resistance. So that generated by your tires on the road. And the quickest and cheapest way of improving your rolling resistance is to inflate your tires to the correct pressure. Because if they're too soft, you'll be increasing the rolling resistance. And actually, if they're too hard, you will also increase the rolling resistance, perhaps surprisingly so. So the million dollar question then, what tire pressure should you run? Well, the honest answer, the long and short of it is, no one actually knows. So in a lab where you can measure it really accurately, it seems like 110 PSI is very roughly the lowest rolling resistance pressure, although it does depend on tire to tire. But we can theorize that out on the open road on rougher tarmac, a softer tire is actually gonna roll faster because it'll be able to absorb all the little imperfections on the road, and that'll mean that your bike and your body will be bounced around less, meaning that you can travel faster which isn't terribly helpful, I know. So what should you actually inflate your tires to then? Well, for a 70 kilo rider using 25C wide tires, you wanna put about 95 PSI in. If you ride super smooth tarmac, you could increase that slightly. And if it's rougher tarmac, you can decrease it slightly. And then in terms of weight, for every 10 kilos heavier, you can increase the pressure by about three PSI. And then vice versa, if you're lighter, minus the pressure by about three PSI per 10 kilos. But of course, if you're running thinner tires, you need to put a bit more pressure in. So if you're running 23s, perhaps three or four PSI higher. And if you're running wider tires, you've got the luxury of running slightly softer as well. Oh, and if you're using tubular tires, you can actually significantly reduce the rolling resistance by gluing them on as opposed to using tub tape. Back to drivetrains now, and another way you can lose efficiency is through noise. Now it could be the squeaking of a dry chain, or it could just be the ticking of poorly adjusted gears. So you always need to make sure that your gears are indexed perfectly. Now that has the knock-on effect, obviously, of helping you to shift faster, which is only gonna help you go faster as a whole. I mean, it technically won't make your bike faster, but you know what I mean. And whilst we're talking about things like that, your braking also is really important. Now you might point out that slowing down is the opposite of going faster, and you'd be right. But when talking to a Canyon engineer about disc brakes a few months back, he pointed out that braking is simply negative acceleration, and therefore as important as acceleration, which is something that you definitely wouldn't turn down. So make sure your brakes are in tip-top condition. Your cables need to be perfect, the pads need to have loads of life left in them, be clean and correctly adjusted to hit the rim squarely. bearings. Now you might only start to notice them when they give up the ghost or stop working entirely, at which point they will be slowing you down. But you can actually speed up bearings that are even in good condition. And you do that by removing the factory grease that's on there and then cleaning everything forensically with that ultrasonic cleaner that you've just got lying around. And then once you're back to square one, you refill the cartridge with a super low friction grease. But here's the thing, according to US-based researcher Friction Facts, if you only fill the cartridge to 25%, it will be much, much faster than if you pack it with grease. And that's because he suggests that the ball bearings stop rolling and start sliding instead, what he calls churning, and that significantly increases the friction. 
Your bike's clean, it's perfectly adjusted, but before heading out the door, you need to lubricate. And at this point, you could actually significantly speed up or slow down your bike because certain chain lubes increase the friction of your drivetrain. And more expensive chain lubes, by the way, don't necessarily mean faster. Because as brands are waking up increasingly to the advantages of marginal gains, for want of a better phrase, they are putting more effort in to making faster lubricants. Like, luck off in fact, because when they created this hydrodynamic lube with Team Sky, who are the architects of marginal gains, they put efficiency at the top of their list. More lube doesn't mean better, by the way. So you need full coverage, but not an excess, because that will actually increase the friction. So lubricate the rollers of the chain, and not the outside of it, and then wipe off any excess. These modifications will not raise your threshold power. They may not help you hang on to your local fast group ride, but does that mean that they won't make a difference? No, they will. How much it matters though, well that kind of depends on you. But when you think about it, cleaning, correct tire pressure, adjusting of gears, and your choice of chain lube are actually all just thoughtful maintenance. And so you kind of might as well do it anyway. When it comes to your bearings though, I will admit, I have never, and I'm probably likely to never, ever do it. But, had I known about it when I was racing, well, I think maybe I just might. I did skip across uh, indexing gears really quite quickly, but if you want to see in-depth videos on that subject, then if you click just up there, then you get through to indexing your rear derailleur, and just down there, you get through to indexing your front derailleur. Before leaving this video though, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe.